हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न समथिंग अबाउट बायोलॉजिकल हजार्ड्स एंड फूड माइक्रोबायोलॉजी आई एम डॉक्टर नीलेश अमृतकर एंड आई हैव बीन वर्किंग फॉर लास्ट ट्वेंटी इयर्स इन द फील्ड ऑफ एनालिटिकल सर्विसेज इन फूड केमिस्ट्री एंड माइक्रोबायोलॉजी बायोलॉजिकल हजार्ड्स इफ यू हैव अ लुक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर स्लाइड वी कैन सी दैट मेजोरिटी ऑफ द फूड आउटब्रेक्स आर बिकॉज ऑफ बैक्टेरिया पैरासाइट एंड वायरसेस अबाउट एटी परसेंट ऑफ food borne diseases are because of biological sources the recent outbreak data from cdc uh, that is center for disease control uh, usa shows that majority of the outbreaks that have led to illnesses hospitalization deaths is from biological source the potential biological hazards include the bacteria viruses protozoa yeast molds and also prions to understand more about biological hazards we also need to understand what is microbiology microbiology is the study of microorganisms which are unicellular or cell cluster microscopic organism these includes the eukaryotes such as fungi and protist and also prokaryotes viruses though are not strictly classified as living organisms also come under this particular science in short microbiology refers to the study of life and organisms that are too small to be seen with the naked eye uh, if we map the food microbiology on a timeline we can see that the bacteria evolved millions of years before the first human entered on this earth and there have been early reported incidences of food poisoning in the early century like ad 1000 and 1500 ad where blood sausages and mycotoxicosis was reported over a period of time in last 100 years the science of microbiology has developed evolved to a better understanding of food microbiology and now better understanding of food safety bacteria it may be a bacilli or a cocci would divide into two in less than 20 minutes and if you look at in 10 to 12 hours you will have billions of these bacteria is growing very happily and the colonies would become visible to the naked eye so on a lighter side we can say that the bacteria multiply by division how this bacteria enter and affect the food we need to understand what are the food different type of foods there are high risk food and low risk foods the high risk foods are generally moist rich in proteins and are at neutral or slightly acidic ph whereas the low risk foods are ph with less than 4.6 water activity less than 0.85 may contain high salt or high sugar such as the pickled food or the dried food or the foods that are hermetically sealed the high risk food includes foods like the poultry the meat the dairy products the soup and raw eggs how do we know whether the food is a high risk food we can use a thumb rule which i call as fat tom if the food has got good nutritional value has an acidity between 7.5 to 4.6 is generally stored at a temperature of 5 degrees to 57 degrees centigrade if the food is exposed at these temperatures for more than 4 hours is exposed to oxygen and has high moisture content or a high water activity these foods are highly susceptible to microbiological contaminations the microorganisms can make the food unsafe when these microorganisms act as spoilers or as pathogens there are some examples of food spoilers such as acetobacter or bacillus or clostridium flat sore spores lactic acid bacteria which spoils the food it need not necessarily harm the human beings who would eat this food but there are certain bacteria which will produce some toxins or which could create some infection in the human beings when that food is eaten examples of food pathogens are salmonella shigella bacillus cereus staph aureus clostridia vibrio there are also emerging pathogens nowadays those pathogens which cause illness and have recently appeared or have been recognized as a threat potential threat in the population very recently are on rise and this includes bacteria which are multi drug resistance vibrio uh, fetus or campylobacter jejuni vibrio uh, fulnivicus 
listeria monocytogens cryptosporidium and certain viruses these bacteria can cause either infection or intoxication when ingested what's the difference between infection and intoxication whenever a pathogen invades the body after consumption of a contaminated food is infection whereas when the pathogen grows in the food and produces a toxin that may cause subsequent illness when consumed is intoxication growth in food may not necessarily be the cause of illness but growth in food in case of intoxication produces toxin is a cause of illness the examples of infectious bacteria are pathogenic e coli salmonella listeria monocytogens and all viruses and parasites whereas the examples of intoxicating pathogens are staphylococcus aureus clostridium botulinum bacillus cereus well this is quite a busy slide and i have tried to differentiate between some of the bacteria which causes intoxication and some of the bacteria which causes infection and if you look at the incubation period some of the bacteria are potent within an hour and some may take almost one week to even 50 days let's take some example staphylococcus aureus it causes nausea vomiting abdominal cramping and the foods contaminated by improper handling and holding of temperatures such as meat and poultry and egg products protein based salads sandwich fillings cream based bakery products are the high category high risk foods for the intoxication by staphylococcus aureus in the infection example we can consider salmonella because salmonella is the major source of the food borne illnesses across the globe it causes abdominal cramps diarrhea fever and headache and it takes less than 72 hours to cause an infection in a human being the foods such as animal origin foods foods contaminated through contact of feces raw animal products or intended infected food handlers poultry eggs raw milk all are classified as high risk food for salmonella infections so this is the slide which i did mention earlier that salmonella is one of the most common causative agents in food epidemics around the globe and about 80% of food borne infections are because of salmonella and out of which 50% are because of salmonella enteritis let us understand from where would these bacteria come from that is the sources of bacterial contamination food gets contaminated through the raw materials or the ingredients that make the food the processing equipment and machinery used in making of the food the premises such as the environment water air soil which comes in contact with the food refuse or the leftovers and garbage and sewage around the food processing plant animals birds rodents and insects around the food processing plant the packaging material food handlers and finally even the storage and transportation of these food products so to sum it up hygiene is the key to safe foods this is a slide which shows that the improper holding temperature or poor personal hygiene or the contaminated equipment are the major sources of food borne illnesses the most common question that one can ask now is from where would we get these infections there has been a survey done by cdc again which shows that majority of these food borne outbreaks happen because of the food that is eaten at cafeterias restaurants and even at private residences as a food regulator we also need to understand the history or the evolution of food legislation across the globe the first act the british food and drugs act came up in 1860 followed by the us national meat inspection law in 1890 there was a comprehensive food drug and cosmetic act established in the us in the 1939 and the food agriculture organization established in 1945 by the world health organization led to the formation of codex alimentarius commission in 1963 the food safety act in the uk of 1990 followed by 
the other countries also coming up with their own set of microbiological or chemical guidelines for the ready to eat food or the processed foods. In India also or the Food Safety Act has evolved since 1954. The earlier act, the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act of India has evolved now into the Food Safety and Standards Act of 2006 and the draft of 2009 on the regulations, rules and regulations were formalized in 2011 as Food Safety Standards Rules and Regulations in India. In fact, in last couple of months or in last one year, these regulations have seen a lot of changes and a lot of harmonization with respect to the legislation across the globe. The present regulation uh, talks about the microbiological standards as a part of Appendix B where it is classifying about 35 food categories such as spices, sweetening agents, milk and milk products, water, meat and meat products, fish and alcoholic beverages. Before we move into the final details of these microbial standards, I would like you to get introduced to something called as ICMSF, International Committee on Microbiological Standards for Food. This committee classifies the microbiological standards as per a sampling plan which is called as a two class plan or a three class plan where N is the number of samples to be taken, C is the number of units allowed to exceed the criteria, the small m is the limit below which the results are considered to be satisfactory and the big M is the limit above which all results are considered to be unsatisfactory. So when it comes to a pathogen, a two class sampling plan is followed. That means there is no big M in this. If the pathogen is present, then straight away the sample is considered to be potential hazardous. And if for hygiene parameters, if two of the five samples are showing the limits within small m and big m, the sample still is considered to be satisfactory. So what is the action that a regulator will have to take in case of satisfactory, unsatisfactory or potential hazard? Let us have a look at that. When the food sample is found to be satisfactory, that is the test values of small m and big m are conforming to the specified limits, no action is required. But in case the test values for hygiene parameters are not confirming, the sample is considered to be unsatisfactory, the FSSI needs to investigate for the non-conformity and legal action may be taken on the defected products. Subsequent release of this would be subject to HACCP GMP audit clearance by FSSAI. In case when the test values for safety parameters are not confirming, that is pathogens are present in the food products, the food would be considered as potential hazardous and the action would be serious food safety concern. The premises may be stopped with legal actions, recall and an hold on the products. Failure for recall will lead to seizure of the food products and the FSSI would have to undertake a detailed risk assessment to investigate and approve only after the compliance is done. Let us look at the final details of the microbiological standards. Recently, FSSI has come up with lot of specifications for the high risk food categories such as the milk and milk products where they clearly state that only trained person with specialized knowledge in microbiology would be able to take the sample and the sampling has to be as per the IS 11546 or ISO 707. The transportation, the time and the lab needs to be clearly defined when a sampling is to be undertaken. The sampling plan has to be as per the ICMFS, ICMSF guidelines. And the standard would be based on the hygiene parameters and the safety parameters. The product would be classified under three categories, satisfactory, unsatisfactory and potential hazardous. And all the methods of analysis would be as per the IS and ISO methods. In fact, FSSI states that there is no provision for retesting for microbiological parameter. That means if the sample fails in the first round, that means the sample is going to fail completely. FSSA also defines the sampling area that means the sampling location from where the sample can be taken at the manufacturing unit as well as at the retail point. For milk and milk products, the regulation states hygiene indicators as aerobic plate count, coliform count, staphylococcus aureus, yeast and molds and fecal streptococci. 
whereas safety indicators the pathogens as E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, Listeria, Monocytogens, Bacillus cereus, Sulfide reducing Clostridia and the new entrant Enterobacter Sakazaki. Similarly for milk, meat and meat products, the FSSAI has defined the hygiene indicators at total plate count, yeast and molds, E. coli, Staph aureus and safety indicator pathogens as Salmonella, Listeria, Monocytogens, Clostridium perfringens as well as Clostridium botulinum and an additional pathogen Campylobacter species. For fish and fish products, FSSAI has classified the parameters under 1A and 1B as again hygiene parameters and the safety parameters and have added yeast and mold count to table 1A and new parameters, new pathogens as Listeria monocytogens and Clostridium botulinum instead of Clostridium perfringens. For alcoholic beverages, this is completely new category uh, mentioned by FSSA and it includes the alcoholic beverages such as wines, beers and draught beer and they have given prescribed limits for total plate count, yeast stand mold and coliform count for draught beer and have mentioned in the regulation that coliforms and pathogenic organisms should be absent from wines and beer. Apart from the regulatory limits, we also need to understand the scientific background to the ingredients or the food that is being processed in our food premises. Here is a slide which I have tried to compile the potential biological hazards with respect to the food ingredient source. So if it is a soft cheese being used in a factory, one of the most common biological hazard would be Listeria monocytogens. If eggs are processed, then it would be Salmonella. If fresh fruits and vegetables are being processed, then it can be Salmonella, Enterohemorrhagic E. coli, Listeria monocytogens, viruses, Clostridium botulinum and certain parasites. In case of spices, the regulation talks only about Salmonella, but there are other potential biohazards such as Enterohemorrhagic E. coli as well as Clostridium perfringens. From potable water or ice, there would still be biological hazards such as Salmonella, E. coli, viruses and parasites. After having considered the foodborne pathogens, the regulation, the science behind it, we would also like to consider over here how would we detect these bacteria in our foods. There are classical methods wherein indicator organisms such as coliforms or E. coli are analyzed for. We need to follow the standard methods as per the IS, ISO, AFA compendium, AOSC, US FDA, BAM and more recently even the FSS has come up with microbiological manual of methods. There are rapid methods also to determine the presence of bacteria in various food samples. However, they are not so regularly used in our country primarily because of its high cost but it has got its own advantages that instead of taking the conventional 5 days of analysis you would be able to get results with rapid methods within 24 hours. These methods involve the use of chromogenic fluorogenic media, miniaturized biochemical kits for final confirmation of these pathogens, antibody based methods or nucleic acid based methods such as PCR or RT-PCRs or use of bioluminescence is also one of the new emerging technologies used for rapid detection of bacteria in various food samples. Finally, after having gone through the whole process of the food microorganisms, spoilage as well as pathogens to the legislations and to the detection, one needs to understand that the best way is to prevent the contamination happen happening in the food. And for this, WHO has come up with some golden rules and I would like this to be presented across in this particular session. Choose food processed for safety. While many foods such as fruits and vegetables are best in their natural state, other foods are not safe unless they are processed. For example, milk needs to be pasteurized as up against the raw milk. Fresh or frozen poultry needs to be treated before it is being used as a food. And certain foods eaten raw such as lettuce needs thorough washings. Cook food thoroughly to destroy the pathogens. Eat cooked foods immediately. Store cooked foods carefully. Reheat cooked foods thoroughly. Avoid contact between the raw food and the cooked foods. Wash hands repeatedly, especially when handling non-food items. Keep all the kitchen surfaces meticulously clean. Even the clothes used to clean the utensils need to be changed every day. Protect your food from insects, rodents and other animals. 
by storing the these food in tight containers and use of pure water and in case of doubt always boil the water before use so these are the golden rules which have been prescribed by who for safe food preparation and thus avoid food contamination friends in this session we have seen the outbreaks because of the biological sources or the biological pathogens basics of microbiology and food microbiology how infection and intoxication happens the sources of contamination we have seen the food safety regulation the history and some of the recent notifications for milk meat fish alcohol etc we have been introduced to the concept of icmsf guidelines for safe food we got introduced to very briefly into the detection methods and finally the who golden rules for safe foods thank you